Hi everybody, it's Cathy here and welcome to my live stream this evening. Um, so tonight I'm really excited about this one because it's something I'm going to be talking about um, you playing with your energy field and boundaries and it's come up with so many of my clients recently and it's just such an interesting topic. Boundaries and um, the way that we can use our energy, energy field consciously to uh, kind of like l limit what energy comes in and what we're putting out, that it's, it's such a powerful tool to play with. So I'm going to share with you some of the, some of the stories that have come up for different clients and from my, from my own experience, and to just have kind of give you a, a bit of a picture or some awareness really of where you might be uh, where your energy field might be wide open or it might be really close to to your body or just where you could use it differently in a more powerful way so that you can uh, transform your relationships you can stop uh, the energy vampires draining your energy um, there's all it gives you confidence there's all kinds of ways that this can help you so if you like what I'm talking about and uh, you want to hear more about this kind of thing, about energy, about ways that we can use our energy to attract more abundance and a greater flow into our lives, then hit the uh, subscribe button, which you should find somewhere around the screen. Um, but let's get going. So boundaries. It's... Uh, they tend to be these invisible kind of rules that we've picked up. Uh, that we kind of live by they're sort of unconscious a lot of the time and um, they really impact our lives but it's even if we have very porous boundaries or super rigid boundaries that kind of stop us connecting um, it's not too late to change them or to learn about them or to um, use your energy field in a conscious way to make your life more how you want it to be um, your energy boundaries, they're what define someone, that what they, they define your sense of self, uh, who you are as an individual. And also when they're healthy, they make others feel safe around you, uh, which also allows you to feel safe within your own environment. They tend to define how we love and value ourselves. And also it sort of gives a, a sense of, it shows other people how they can treat you, the way that you hold your, your boundaries. Um, it's like you're teaching them in a way. Um, they help us to know what we're able to give and receive. So, you know, when you know that when your energy is totally flat, that you have nothing left to give. If, you're, if you have um, kind of like weak boundaries, or you feel obliged, then it's like that boundary just gets flattened and you give even more and then it creates resentment. Um, so when you've got strong, healthy boundaries, it helps you know when your energies, where your energy levels are at and what you've got left to give. And um, also it shows you how what you need to receive to, to feel filled up, to feel energized. Uh, they're the dividing lines between you and everyone else. Uh, and, and it's a line that can't be crossed physically or emotionally or energetically. You know, it's what, it's what separates you and your needs and your wants and your desires and your thoughts and your feelings from others. And it's, uh, so when they're clear and you know who you are, it kind of creates a nice space around you so that any energy that comes from other people doesn't flatten you. It doesn't knock you off centre. Um, it doesn't confuse you. Um, so, you know, you can see that they're really important. And they sort of give you this sense of protection. Um, they help you kind of evaluate and assess what words or uh, actions or, or just simply energy you're willing to accept from others. And it helps you block the block anything that doesn't feel um, of a good vibration that you don't want to have in your field. If you, it's quite easy to tell when your 
energy field is being violated because usually it sort of creates a sense of um it can bring up really intense feelings feelings of anger feelings of hurt feelings of resentment but when we do feel safe in our space and we've got these healthy boundaries we can be completely true to ourselves and really express ourselves authentically because in that space you don't need to have any masks you don't need to control yourself and you don't need to control others or, or the situations around you um because and also like when you are if your boundaries are weak often we spend a lot of energy trying to control those external energies like we try and control other people's behavior so that it doesn't impact us um so when you've got not these nice clear boundaries then it means that you don't have to do that you all your energy you can sort of bring it back to you plus there's all kinds of different ways that you can um, fill up your energy field you don't need it from other people don't need them to to fill your your field up you can you can connect to source you can connect to the earth doing it in a much more conscious way doing it connecting to nature there's all kinds of ways that you that you can um, charge up your energy field rather than unconsciously pulling energy from other people. So I wanted to uh, just dive into what's happening at an energetic level when we're experiencing these boundary issues, because it is largely to do with how your energy field is at any given time. So firstly, one of, uh, you might be someone who has a wide open energy field. And this is really common with spiritual people, spiritual people, highly sensitive people, um, people who have that awareness of being completely connected to oneness. Um, and it's such a beautiful feeling to be connected like that uh, and to feel source energy and to feel that connection with nature there's a, a tendency to not want to close that down. Uh, but this is, this is where it's quite, oh, I don't know, it can be dangerous, but it can, it's, it's just really n not useful more than anything. You get, because when your energy field is wide open, it's so easy to just get completely flattened by somebody else's uh, energy who comes into your space. Because there's no protection, there's no buffer from what their energy is being. Uh, and it doesn't have to be in person. It could be a phone call or it could be an email. Um, it could be stuff going on in the news. It could be a toxic environment. It could be even somebody sending their energy to you. It feels nice to kind of blend your energy with your loved ones or it's you almost like you think it would be a nice thing to do. It's about seeking connection. It's about sharing love. But this is really not a good thing to do. Um, a, one of my clients, she was asking me about um, her and her little daughter, who's about two or three, and um, how to, firstly, we were talking about her and how she manages her boundaries and, uh, and how that impacts her daughter. So if, if you are wide open with your energy and you don't have an energy field, and someone else is in your space who you who you love and you're wanting to give your energy and your love it's actually uh, that that other person will actually not feel safe because they they can't feel where you end it's quite invasive when your energy goes into their space and also because it's coming with love it's really confusing so you get these uh, conflicting kind of feelings of well there's this nice energy coming in but I don't like having it there and also you know if if you think of like an overdoting parent um they're, they're giving all their energy and focus and attention to a child but it can be quite suffocating you know and that can create a lot of guilt uh in the child because they're sort of rejecting that love uh, because they need to assert their their own boundaries to feel safe so it can get really messy as you you can imagine and so in hi Inga, you're saying how to balance openness with protection. I will come to that. I'll come to that. So um small children, um though I had a client a few years ago, 
she had a, a little a little boy who was about three and she was a parent who was completely open loving uh, quite a hippie parent she was really lovely li kind of you know liberal values and didn't want to limit her child um but she, he, he was a terror at home he was um you know he was always playing up she got very stressed with him didn't know what to do with him and then he, you know she would have to really put her foot down when she didn't want to and um you know it, it, it wasn't an easy relationship for her and i think the thing that stressed her the most was that when he went to school uh and she would then come and pick him up the teachers would all say what an amazing little angel he was as so well behaved always did what he was told now the reason this happened is because she didn't have her energy field up she was wide open just wanting to kind of give whereas the school teachers they have very clear boundaries about where they end where the children are and the kids feel safe so what what the what her son was doing is like when a child is born and they come into this life feeling fully connected to oneness it's like they have no sense of separation at that early stage not until around about 18 months two years when the ego starts to develop and and that's the the kind of um the, the mechanism that helps to create their sense of self their their self-identity and as that's growing, they're pushing to where they end and where mum starts or dad or the siblings or other people then they're, they're always kind of it's not a conscious thing though they're, they're trying to find who they are wh uh, what their identity is and so with a, a parent who's got very spongy boundaries they just keep pushing and pushing and pushing because they're trying to find what makes them feel safe and um you know normally it's behavior that is then labeled as um you know that they're playing up in some way but they're really just trying to find where they're feeling safe having an, an energy boundary in place consciously it doesn't mean that love can't transmit through you so it is about holding it in place it's like a um it it's like a uh, kind of like a oh, it's not a force it's like a force field oh we we'll call it a force field it's like a force field of self-love so it it does protect you but it's not from fear it's it's something that um helps you be restored and it helps you fill up um it's and love can permeate that you can transmit love through that and it still reaches another person um however the, the, it, you need to have that other person needs to give um, permission for your energy to come in we are all responsible for our own energy fields and unless we um it's like through intention you get to set what energies can come in your field from outside so if you make a uh, and this is a universal law it's like no if you set an intention that no energies of a lower vibration than yours a lower vibration than love can come through your energy field it can't unless you drop it and then it's a matter of doing some energy clearing techniques that um or and also sort of changing some of the patterns that you might have that allowed that to happen in the first place but you can clear it and you can reset that that boundary and it means that you can go into places with your energy field intact and you've got this buffer uh, of space you can feel strong you can feel uh, you can feel yourself you know just be authentic be strong in who you are without fear of someone else being able to impact you there's um or, and it gives you sort of a sense it gives you the sense of being able to respond rather than react to somebody another uh, client she was talking to me yesterday actually and um the way she describes her connection with her mum is that she just gets knocked off center whenever they get together and they they really impact each other energetically 
and she would love to feel closer to her mum but she doesn't feel safe around her and when we dug down a little bit deeper we kind of discovered that neither of them had an energy field in place wide open both uh, she's a very spiritual spiritually open woman and what she discovered she was doing is that she was merging her energy like like this so um and that they had always had that pattern and so what happened there for her when she was younger what that also meant was that um and for anyone else who has very wide open energy feels like this where they're merging with people if you're a child and you're growing up in you're like absorbing the energy patterns of your parents or of your siblings or of those important people around you um, so you're taking on all the programs and things or the the, the reactions or the energy of um, maybe so for example your say your mum experienced some trauma in her earlier in her life uh, which created a, a belief or a pattern or some kind of program that caused her to be very highly strung and um, quite neurotic or very very nervous or something in when that as a child to fit into your new kind of like you're here in the physical in this physical life you absorb and mimic the patterns around you it helps you fit in it's a survival technique it's unconscious but we take those patterns with us and they become part of us uh, we make it part of our identity but this is just the this is the false self it's not who we are but we end up reacting from these through so much of our lives so you know from my client whenever she meets her mum she they they kind of react with each other and um she started to feel that a lot of what she was carrying we discovered that none of it was actually anything to do with her um a lot of the programs and things they were all things that she picked up from her mum so as soon as she put her boundary in place she was able to give that energy back to let it go um and just not not take it on and be much more conscious going into um that situation with her mum or just even going to see her mum she needs to have her energy um field in place consciously to manage the process to have a buffer so that she you know, didn't get triggered um, children are really so much better at, at playing with their boundaries than, than adults because they they don't have any sort of uh, limits as to um, you know it's still a game for them and they are sort of like well of course I've got an energy field if, if you show me that I've got one they can use their imagination it's not a problem they don't they don't have the blocks um, another client I taught her to teach her little boy who was about six um, how to play with his energy field uh, because like, he he was not fitting in at school he was very disruptive he'd been excluded from school multiple times very very disruptive but he was a very loving boy very sensitive and very wise a wise little soul but very very reactive and so once she taught him how to play with this energy field and have it in place it was like he became this model student and all the teachers then started to love him because he was quiet and happy he did well at school because he felt safe he felt able to control who he was being and that he could be himself um so and those are those are for people who are sort of very wide open uh, another drawback of having very very wide open energy is for highly sensitive people is that these people often just opt to keep away from, uh, from from you know lots of other people uh, or from cities or you know situations because they just feel impacted so much um, they can't handle the energy because they get overwhelmed they need that quiet of perhaps nature and to feel calm and balanced um, and so you know this is kind of limiting really isn't it you know is it what well it's really understandable that they can't very well settle into a very a, a lifestyle that's right in the hub of busyness to be uh, limited from ever going into it or to be completely impacted by it if you do have to go into it you know that that's not really helpful so again learning to play with your energy field and have it in place so that you can manage your experience if for you know a limited amount of time it gives you 
um, so much more scope to en enjoy experiences that are available to you. So that's people that are wide open. And then you've got people who have an energy field in pulled really, really close. And um, another client I spoke to recently, he was aware of his energy field from a very young age. And he was sort of aware that if he like shone his light out too brightly, it wouldn't be acceptable. Um, he just, it was a, a, a feeling he's had from a, a very young age. And so he pulled his energy field right in. It's like he didn't let his beingness out um, because he was afraid of the reaction that he would get. Uh, so in order to feel safe, that's what he needed to do. He needed to pull it in quite close to his body. And it, this resulted in him not feeling confident to be to be seen, to let his true light shine. Um, it, it stopped him from really being willing to take up space. Um, as, a, as a newborn baby, if you think of a scenario like this, if a newborn baby comes into a family where there's already maybe a little toddler who um, has had all the energy of its parents doting on it and then new baby comes into the picture and that suddenly that little toddler feels this withdrawal of energy to it and it resents this new being that's come into the space if it comes with anger and uh, and it, you know an aggrieved energy towards that new baby and that baby's sensitive that baby's going to either put a block up to stop that energy coming in or it will pull its field um, quite close to it as well because it's reacting, it's trying to pull away from, from negative energy that's coming towards it. And uh, yeah, this, this happened to me actually as well. So <laughs> I know this one uh, in a big way. And um, so you tend to kind of use your energy field as a shield. And if it's too close to you, the drawback of this is that you end up easily reacting to other people's emotions and um or you know to their energy because you don't have a buffer of your own um it, you don't have the time to respond so you react uh, and it's it's really easy to get steamrolled and feel like you don't have the time to think um for example when someone's really in your face you you don't have the capacity to deal with it there once they're too close and so the tendency is to want to run away or close down really tight like a clam because you're just too overwhelmed by this energy coming towards you if you're a parent or a partner for example and you're you're trying to get your child or, or your other half uh, to reasonably do something that you want them to do if their energy is pulled in for whatever reason you won't get anywhere with them and if you don't first give them some space now, this is a control pattern, but you're both playing the game unless you consciously use your energy field powerfully or you allow that other person to open up. So it, it's all energy, all our relationships, all our, the ways that we relate to each other, it's all an energetic exchange. So, you know, your energy field is completely under your control and it's your responsibility. Um, as long as you, because it's your responsibility, if you have people in your life who are energy vampires, who kind of like you're around them and they completely suck all the energy out of you or you feel drained after you've been to see them and just tired and you, you lose your spark, you've lost your shine, you can't even work out what the reason is. It's actually your willingness to allow them to take your energy um, that has created that. So, you know, if, if this happens to you, check your energy field. Also, if you end up being around people and you feel resentment or um, you feel like you've taken on what they were feeling, that is also a sign that you've allowed your energy field to drop or you've allowed your energies to merge. Another thing to watch out for if you're a parent particularly is if your child gets ill when you do the exact same symptoms, um, that's a sign that your energies are merged or that your boundaries are in place. Having your energy field in place is it will make you feel different. It makes you feel safe. 
you can charge it with energy that you wish um if you wish to to like draw something into your life you can charge it with that intention you can charge it with like a sense of feeling powerful sense of being loving sense of being peaceful any vibration that you wish to experience if you consciously pull energy in and then you you can like it's like you fill up your energy field with it with intent for whatever's most beneficial this is then what you'll you'll attract that in because you you know like energies attract it's a law of attraction so it's a very powerful tool um and also it's a little bit like having I like to think of it a little bit like Harry Potter's magic invisibility cloak um, because you can go into a situation where normally you might have been fearful, you might have found other people's energies really confronting uh, or possibly a bit aggressive or just uncomfortable uh, and you can go into it with this sense of your energy field in place and you can you because you're not going to then react you're so much more conscious and aware so you can navigate some of these more uncomfortable places and um which you might normally have avoided you know we can't avoid all of the uncomfortable situations in life so it can really help with that um plus also when you're being strong and in true uh, authentic the reaction from other people is different you don't have those triggers you don't have those buttons available to be pressed um, so it makes it an easier journey for somebody else who who's in your space so you know if you've got a, uh, a pre a, like a if you've had a, a rocky relationship and you keep pressing each other's buttons by playing with your energy field keeping it intact it makes that a lot of, more a smoother journey so just to re-emphasize it to have your boundary in place doesn't mean uh that, that your love won't reach your loved ones it doesn't cut your love off from other people or, or theirs from yours it and it's think of it as this nurturing force field of love um, and think of it like two balloons you know they 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 can get really close but they don't merge um you've got to think of yourself as separate divine sparks of consciousness um, so this loving energy can pass between you um, and it can be received by the other if they allow it but they don't need to merge and the other thing about your energy field is that you can let it go you can as in um, you can merge with your environment so if you are meditating or if you're out in nature if you do it consciously it does allow you to totally fill up with light and love and it feels amazing uh, and it will charge you up really really in such a, a wonderful way that's why meditation is is so wonderful and being out in nature and connecting with the earth and all of these things are, are great tools for um charging your field but remember when you when that you're going to leave that you need to close it back down you need to ground you need to be back in your body and have that back in place so that you're you know you you've got your nice strong bouncy clear healthy energy um field in place um otherwise you could get really drained by other people so would you like to experience how to consciously manage your own energy field or to um change your relationships for the better by playing with them do you want to maybe clear patterns and energies that you've taken on as a result of merging with others. Because um, these are all the things that block your flow of abundance. Um, would you like to learn how to charge up your energy field to make it attractive to the things that you want to experience in life? If you do, this is a large part of powerful work that I do with my clients. I've mentioned quite a few of them just recently. So if you're interested to find out uh, what you can expect from working with me and, and playing around with this kind of energy work it's a lot of fun it's very powerful and it's, it's really surprising a lot of the time um, but you I invite you to book a no strings um, free possibility call with me just to see what magic is possible playing together like this because so much can shift in such a short time once you've got your energy field in place it's 
your tool to carry around with you for your whole life. It's it's um, it's such a powerful thing to master. So that's it from me tonight. If you've got any questions, do pop them in the box. I'll get back to you. But also, I'd love to know if this resonates. If you've experienced your own energy field um, where you've had it too far out, how that impacted you. Um, whether you've kind of been aware of other people's energy impacting you, whether you've found yourself trying to kind of like get into your the energy field of somebody else, trying to um, get something from them, sort of, you know, um, like I was talking about before, when, when, you, when someone's energy field is very, very close and they tend to withdraw, there's this like little game that goes on where there's, one is chasing the other so have you been in that situation because i know i have so if you would um if you've got any questions do pop them in the box other than that i will say goodbye for now and i'll see you next time bye